Because if I was just a, an average guy who wanted to do daily living functions, I would be recovered. But to get back to a high level of athletic activity, that's a different story. I've played college football, been an athlete my whole life, um, never had great mobility. Progressively over the years, my mobility got worse and worse. The doctor, they did some MRIs, told me that I had some torn labrums. I wanted something that was gonna have no limits on my, if I wanted to squat 500 pounds again, I could do it. And it wasn't until a year later that I was able to book a surgery. The first surgery um, was scheduled for October 5th in Seattle. My idea was, you know, they go in, they replace the part, you know, they move some stuff around, put it back together and you leave and, you know, a couple weeks later you're, you know, you're good. And, but, but that's not the case. The surgery was the easy part, you know. I go to sleep, I wake up, and it's done. So right away, as soon as you wake up, you're walking. Right, moving. So I was like, wow, this feels good. Man, if it goes like this, this is going to be a nice, easy process. Well, that didn't last. Um, doing, you know, bringing the legs out and down, you know, which was incredibly tough. Someone that can uh, help take care of you for the first week, um, having my mom there, you know, to, to cook for me, to help me get my leg, because I, I, I couldn't do that on my own. You know, put, helping set the ice machine up, you know, that was key. I have to wake my mother up. I'm in the hotel room. I need you to take my leg off the bed. I need you to put my leg back up on the bed. Take it off, put it on, put it, you know, and if I have the ice on, take that off. Oh, you have to go to the bathroom. Let me get up and go. No, it's like five minutes. So there's not a, you know, if you have to go, it's not a quick process, you know. So it's to sit on the toilet, the toilets are very low. I'm trying to sit with a leg out and it, it's a lot of things you don't think about, you know, those little things, right? Sit back into the car and then try and swing the legs in and pick the leg up, and the crutches, getting out of the car. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge. Surprisingly, holding like a farmer's carry with dumbbells was better than walking on my own. The weight kind of balanced me out a little bit, so I started doing a little farmer's carry, walking, you know, without the crutch. Even prior to that, I would come to the gym and do upper body. So, you know, people would help me lift the weights, put them on the bar, I do upper body. I would do bench press, you know, uh, triceps, shoulders, that kind of thing. Week five or six was probably my first time back in a workout, you know, with the, with the group class. And I had to scale it. I could um, maybe jump a little rope, but I couldn't do double unders, the regular jump rope. So I would scale to that. I couldn't run. I could ride the bike, you know, and so I have to put the seat up kind of high, you know, that, and I'd bike instead of running. I would try to scale back everything I could do. Pull-ups I could do, I could do strict pull-ups. I couldn't kip, right, because the hip swing was too much. I knew from the beginning that I would have to have both hips done, because both of them were bad. But the doctor said, you know, the, the closest, the soonest they would do the second one is six weeks. Two days prior to the surgery, when I was in Seattle, had to go for a COVID test, I was running on a treadmill. And I got it up to about seven miles an hour um, running on a treadmill. So I felt really good with the hip at that point to have the second surgery. Surgery happens, but that's the easy part. The doctor does his part, he puts everything back together, but, that, but after surgery, the recovery is where the real work begins. Every day for two months, three months, and then getting this much progress, and doing all this work for this much results, and not knowing when the next results are gonna happen, or if they're gonna happen. The level of PT is different, like if you go to a a football training facility, they have those guys up in like right after surgery, no time. If you go to a geriatric where they're treating old patients, I'll oh, come back in six weeks and we start therapy. But with the football players are starting the day after surgery. Why is it so different? Today, I celebrated I can do a lunge and get my knee to the ground. I couldn't do that two days ago. I can do double unders today when I could only do singles two days ago. I celebrate, I got my kit back for my pull-ups. And I celebrate that, and I'm excited about that, as opposed to when am I gonna be able to squat to below parallel again? I can't worry about that. You know, in the CrossFit Games, they have the adaptive athletes. I understand what it takes to train that way and to do those things because I'm not able to move like I wanna move and how frustrating that can be. So. I look at those people now and I'm like, man, that, like doing one arm double unders, you know, when you don't have an arm, you know, what it takes to, to do that and to adapt your skill set to move your body like that.
know, I never thought about that before. Don't take your mobility for granted because as you age, that mobility is going to decrease. And if I can give you any advice now, is work on that mobility now because it's gonna be the most important thing. I don't care how much you can squat right now at 25, 30 years old, because when you get to 45 and 50 years old, I don't, it's not gonna be how much you squat, it's can you get down to the bottom of a squat. And if you can't, it don't matter how much weight you put on the bar because you can't, you can't squat it. But if you can move and you can squat down there, now you have the ability to still train. What I learned is patience, check your ego at the door because I can't do these things. And there's nothing wrong with that. I can spot weak hips and hip stability issues like that. And I can see them. And what I try to tell people and what I try to teach them is you're not going to get a better squat snatch by putting more weight on the bar and squat snatching more weight. You're gonna get better at squat snatches by doing hip mobility because when you hit that bottom and you can root your feet into the ground and you're stable, that's what's gonna give you a better squat. So I've learned that results come with a lot of work and a little bit of result. And it's a process. This, this is a process and they wanna kip, they wanna do a muscle up. And so they skip the process of, I need upper body strength to be able to do a pull up. But let me put the band on and do a muscle up with a band, but I can't pull my own body weight to the bar. So I wanna skip from A to Z and not put in the, pro the work that the process takes. Don't worry about what the person over here is doing. They look very cool and it looks nice and you wanna do that, but we're not ready for that. You have to take the process. And if you do the process right, you'll get there. But it's gonna take, going take a while, right? CrossFit isn't a uh, overnight thing. You come into the gym, we all start here because there's skills in CrossFit that we never did before, that I never did before. So listen, if I can do this process, you can too. And I'm, I'm telling them, take a step back. Don't go too fast, because if you go too fast, you're, gonna, you're going to build a wall with bad bricks in your wall and then when you get so high, you'll never be able to fix them because your wall is gonna to be too big. You'll never go back to the starting place and what it takes to fix that. And you're gonna have a chink in your performance and it's gonna stop you and you'll get to a point where you can't fix it. You have to go back and tear down the wall to fix that brick and build it back. So this journey is gonna be a year to get back my mobility, maybe even two years to get back the strength that I lost along the way because you know, you spend eight weeks out and you come back to the gym, my conditioning was like, I get back into that workout and I'm, I'm dying, you know, because my conditioning has gone by the wayside as well. So to get that back, to get my strength back to where I was, it's gonna be a, a year minimum, probably two years to get back and beyond where I was.